What is going on you guys? Rochelle here today, bringing you the third part of my coding tutorial. Today I'll be covering conditionals and loops. So like I said, I'm going to be covering conditionals and loops today, and I'm going to start off with the very basics, which are basically Boolean expressions. So if you remember, I covered Boolean variables, which are variables that have a value of true or false. So three is greater than five would be false. Five is greater than five would be false. And six is greater than five would be true. So it's things I could evaluate like that. You could also use variables. So if you said int x equals three, x is less than five, then that would be false. So those are some basic examples. There are also a couple of operators that you can use, but the basic ones you'll usually use are less than, greater than, equals, not equals, and there's a bunch for strings and stuff as well. The basic Boolean operations are AND and OR. So AND is basically what you see on the screen. So TRUE and TRUE is TRUE. TRUE and FALSE is FALSE because nothing can be both TRUE and FALSE. And FALSE and FALSE is FALSE. ORs, however, are Similar, but not the same. So true or true is true. False or false is false, but true or false is true because it has to be either true or false. There's nothing in between. So what you see on the screen, pretty important. Memorize and continue to the next part. All right, guys, so now we're gonna cover the very basic conditional statements. And the statements I'm gonna cover today are if ternary operators, which aren't really statements, but similar to ifs, and switch statements. All right, so first we're gonna start with an if statement. Now, an if can be read in English, so it's pretty easy to understand. So, okay, let's say for example, you have a variable x, and if x is less than three, you want to print out the word hello. In that case, we would write something like this. If x less than three curly braces console.log hello and then that would print out the word hello if and only if x is less than three if you wanted to print out goodbye if x is greater than 10 you could add a little bit to that if statement which would be if x is less than three console log hello Else if x is greater than 10, print by, or console log by. So that's how that works. And the final thing that you can tack on to an if else statement is just a plain else, which is a catch all. So if you wanted to print out the same stuff like we had before, the hi and the by, and then in between, you just wanted to print out something else, I don't know, ABC, then you could have what you see on the screen, which is if x less than 3, print hi, else if x greater than 10, print by, else print abc. And then that would accomplish that. Next we're going to cover ternary operators, which are pretty much like if statements, but you can use them in line, which is pretty cool. So if you were making a string and you wanted to use a variable, and you wanted to say something like x is blank 5, if it's greater than 5 or less than 5, then you could do something like this. So you would say x less than 5, question mark, and if that's true, then you would say less than, because I would say x is less than 5, or you could say greater than or equals to for the other statement, which would come after a colon like you see on the screen. So it's basically can be read the same as an if statement, but the syntax is a little different. Next we're gonna go ahead and cover switch statements, which in a switch statement, it's pretty similar to an if else kind of deal, except for it's more organized in my opinion. So you wouldn't be able to do as much with it because it's just, it's not separated in blocks and it's prone to having issues. 
So what you're going to do is say switch and then the variable that you're trying to compare values with. Like if we want to do different things with the variable x. If we want to print out numbers in word form, but only if x is equal to 1, 2, or 3, then you can say switch x case 1 console.log 1 break. So you need to do the break or else it's going to run through all of the commands in a row. And then we would have case 2 console log the word 2 so on and so forth. This also has something similar to else where you can actually type the word default and then that will catch everything. So like I mentioned before it's really important that you guys use the keyword break or else it will run through all of them and you'll have a really frustrating bug that you have to track down. Alright, so that pretty much covers conditionals. Next I'm going to do a brief overview of loops, and if this isn't clear enough, I can give it a dedicated video since loops are a little bit confusing. But the three types of loops I'm going to cover today are for, while, and for each. Now, we'll start with for, and this is something, there's a bunch of different syntax, so I'm just going to show you the most basic. You can start by making, say, an integer is probably the easiest example. So you say for int x equals zero, so that initializes x to be zero. And then the next part after the semicolon is the statement that needs to be true to continue, which is x is less than five. So while x is less than five, we'll run this loop. And the next part is what you're going to do after the loop is done. So we will do x plus plus, which is basically the same thing as x plus one. So inside this loop, you can just see that we're printing out the value of x. So this would print out zero, one, two, three, four. Because when you first go through, it's gonna be equal to zero. You print out the value, you add one. Now the value's gonna be one. You print out the value, you add one, it's gonna be two. And then eventually it's going to get to 4, you're going to add 1, and 5 is not less than 5, so it will stop. So that's the basic of for loops. While loops are very similar to for loops, except it would only be the middle part. So you're able to do while true, and that would be an infinite loop, which is not great, but sometimes you want to do that because you don't know how much input is being put in, or other situations where it's appropriate. But a lot of the time, while loops are used kind of like for loops. So you can initialize the variable above and say int x equals zero, and then you'll have while x is less than five, and then you'll have console log x, and then at the bottom, instead of not putting anything, you'll put x plus plus, and that's the same thing as the for loop. You can also break out of the while loop, and the keyword literally is break, so if the expression was while x is less than 5, but for some reason you actually want to break out when it was 3, which wouldn't really make sense, but let's just pretend that's what you want. Then you can say while x is less than 5, and then you can say if x equals equals 3, which means if x is 3, break. So when it hits 3, it'll break. Else console.log x x plus plus. Now that will effectively print out 0, 1, 2, but it won't print out 3, because that's what you specified in that if statement in the while loop. So that's the basics of while loops. And then finally we have a for each loop. Now not all languages have it, but this is a pretty nifty loop. So I believe I covered arrays in a previous tutorial. and. Basically, a for each loop will parse through an array. So, okay, say we have this array, and it's obviously just an int array with one, two, three, four. So you can run a for each loop with the syntax that you see on the screen now, and it will basically just go through each object in the array. So if we did for each x in A, which is the name of our array, and then we console logged x, then that would print out 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is just a different version of the for loop, and you can do this with a for loop, it's just more straightforward in a for each. So it's really about knowing when each is most appropriate. 
but anything you can do in a while loop, you can pretty much do in a for loop. Anything you can do in a for loop, you can pretty much do in a for each loop. So they're all pretty interchangeable. All right, guys, so that wraps up the conditionals and loops tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys have any suggestions for tutorials you want me to do, please leave me a comment down below. If you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe. I'm sorry I haven't been posting as much as usual, but my life's been pretty busy. I did get one subscriber who wanted me to do OpenGL videos, and I don't feel comfortable enough with it yet to make a tutorial, but it is coming. I'm considering just walking through a tutorial I find online and making a video about it if that helps you, but if that's not what you want, please let me know. Alright, so as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.